So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create the image that you see on the screen now. And we're going to be using Flux for this via replicate.com. And then also we're going to take it into PhotoP for a little bit of editing afterwards. So here we are on replicate.com. And if you want to know how to get set up on Replicate, there's often a very easy beginner's tutorial to follow, which I'll link to in the description box below. They'll get you up to speed with how to get set up and get up and running. So here I'm going to be using the Flux 1.1 Pro Ultra model today, which is the most state-of-the-art, highest performing model that Flux offer at the moment, um, at a higher cost. So it is worth noting at this point, the cost per image you generate is approximately six cents. So you get about 16 images for a dollar, roughly speaking. So there is a cost associated to this, but the quality is amazing and you get um, completely full commercial use to the images if you generate it through replicate.com so what we've got here is a prompt setting which i'm just gonna i'm just gonna paste in a predetermined prompt now i haven't i've sort of created this on the text on the text document i haven't actually ran this yet so i'm it's going to be a surprise to me how this turns out especially in this pro ultra mode so we'll be seeing this for the first time together and then I'll re retrospectively kind of put it up at the start of this video so you'll have already seen it at this point where I haven't which is quite bizarre but anyway so I'm not going to read it out but you can see what kind of thing we've got here we're going on and I'm not using an image prompt so I'm going to ignore that the aspect ratio I'm going to make that 16 by 9 just to kind of put it into the format of a of a YouTube screen you know a YouTube full screen thumbnail just to keep it nice and impactful um, safety time is going to leave that. Seed, I'm going to leave that. Now, the raw mode, I am going to check this because even with unrealistic subjects, you can quite often get a more realistic overall aesthetic and kind of gritty look by choosing the raw mode on. Format with JPEG, I'm going to just leave it as that. And let's click run and see what we get. Okay, that's really nice and really interesting. And if I click into this, you can see just how much incredible detail you get from this Pro Ultra Flux model. It's higher resolution than all the other models, so you get a lot more generated detail. And the lines, you can see all the lines here are super crisp. And um, yeah, it's absolutely, it's it's really amazing looking. Now I'm gonna download that um, to see if I if that's the one I wanna use. But I am just gonna run one more, um, just because I wanna have a little bit of variety. I don't just wanna go with the first one that we get. But I am conscious of the cost of this model, so I'm not gonna sit here and keep rerunning dozens of images like you might do with Schnell or Dev Model. Um, yeah, that's really nice. Look at that. Look at the eyes, the detail on the eyes. And as we've sort of asked for the for the circuit patterns on there, specifically on this one, it's really integrated those above the eyes. Um, so you can see the sort of PCB circuit patterns above there, but then we've got the yellow and the black elements. And this this is a this is an excellent image, and I'm really excited to use that one. So I'm going to download that, and I'm going to open it up in PhotoP, where I'll join you in a second. Okay, so now I've got the image in PhotoP, and what I want to do first off is something that I do to almost all images I generate, which is I create a noise or a grain layer. And how I do that is I'll create a blank layer above the background layer, and I'll highlight that layer and press Shift and F5 as a shortcut to bring up the fill um, dialog box here. And I'll make the fill grey, click OK, and then I'll change that to soft light blending mode. And then we can go to the filter gallery, go to noise and add noise. And you can see it's going to add some grain to the image. If I drag this up just to exaggerate so you can see it clearly on the YouTube um, video. Um, so you can add some noise. I'm going to click monochromatic because I don't want the noise to have colour in it for my taste. I want it to just be black and white noise. And I'm going to take it, it's quite subtle, but I want to take it just to a point where it is there, but it's not intrusive. And this grain just helps to pull things together, make it look a little less digital. And also helps to blend gradients and things like that of color and stop them, um, help to prevent color breakdowns and things like that. So we'll click OK. Now, the reason why I like doing this on a layer is I can then change the size of the noise. So it's a little bit small for me at the moment. So if you press Alt, Command and T, to get to your to get to get your transform selection on that layer we can now go to either the width or the height box here making sure this little chain link images um, to keep their aspect ratio is selected we can just go to one of these and type something like 130 percent and press enter and that's just going to increase the size of that noise overall by you know an extra 30 percent on top and it takes a couple of seconds to adjust 
And so there, we've got a little bit more of like um, a natural looking noise level grain sort of size as far as I'm concerned. And you can adjust the opacity down and do this kind of thing, of course. Now, here's where I would adjust things like contrast. If I wanted to play around with levels or contrast, I would add those under the grain layer. I would always keep the grain layer on the very top. And this is, this is where you can go in and do some really subjective tweaks. But to be honest with you, I might just pull the black layer down a bit. No, I actually really like that how it is. So I'm going to not do that change. But one thing I am going to do is use the excellent Super Bloom plugin, which you can get for free inside Photopea. I've made videos on this before. You've probably seen me do this. But if not, go to the window menu, go to plugins. And somewhere on the screen, pretty high up, I'm sure you'll see one called Super Bloom by Lunal Graphics. So click that and then click install. Mine's already installed, so you can't see it there. And then just click OK and it will install it and it will add it to your bar here next to your layers um, as this little purple triangle icon here. Now I'm going to click that and um, it's going to, I'm going to drag this window out because it's basically giving it as a live preview. So you can drag it nice and large. And I'm not going to go into this in too much detail here because I've, like I said, I've done separate videos on this, exactly how to use it. But this just allows us to add um, bloom, like just really nice quality blooms and glows to any light images or highlights in the images. Um, sorry, highlight areas within the image. And it, you can make them hazy and you can make them bright. You can affect the area, the amount of light that's got light bloom on it. Basically, you can balance these top three sliders how you like to just get something from a more subtle effect to a really sort of overcooked kind of blown out effect if that's what you're going for but for things like this i quite like to keep it subtle but it just adds an extra little dimension um, to your ai generated images and you can also click the colorize button here and you can add a specific color to the glow so if you want to if you've got uh, a color that you want to offset with a different one so for example We've got um, yellow on the yellow is the main color of the subject here and blue is kind of like quite a good like a blue or a sign is quite a good color to to sort of work with yellow so we could choose to actually add that color to our to our glowing elements on the screen here so we could choose to add that complementary contrasting color sorry to that if we like um, but i'm going to stick with just more of an orangey red because i think it looks quite nice um and then you've got all the other, all other um, options, which I'm not going to go into now. And you can add that to the document. And when you do that, you just need to make sure you click on the icon again to get rid of that preview. So we've now added that light blooming effect to the image. You can see that's just kind of brought it to life a bit. And remember, you can always add a layer mask to this and then press B for your brush tool. And with black as your foreground color, I'll make sure we're on a soft brush you can say mask it out of areas if you didn't want it. So if we only wanted it to affect the eyes and it was affecting this light in the bottom right hand side corner, it's too distracting. We could always mask that out. And now it's only really affecting the eyes. Um, or we can go back to white and we can brush that element back in. But I quite like it with that one out and just concentrating mostly on the eyes and a little bit of the detail here. So that's all I would do for this particular image because I think it's excellent. So Hope you found that interesting and I look forward to sharing more ideas in the next video.